violence is a major problem that the world is suffering from. In order to understand the nature of violence, we have to look back at its origin, its evolutionary origin from a primatological viewpoint. There are many uh, misunderstandings about violence. For example, gorillas, which I have been studying for more than 30 years, were regarded as the most violent animals in the world. This is mostly due to the chest-beating display performed by a mature male, which was regarded as a preclude of explosive attacks when gorillas were encountered with the Western explorers in 19th century. In the latter half of 20th century, the pioneering field works by George Scherer and Dan Fossey found that chest beating display has multiple meanings, such as self-assertion, excitement, curiosity, pre-invitation, or courtship, rather than threat. Gorillas are genetically close to us human beings, so misunderstandings about gorillas led us, lead us to misunderstandings of our ancestors. However, the majority of people still imagine that our ancestors survived as the excellent hunters and fighters in a war between communities. For example, the President Obama made a lecture when he was awarded Nobel Prize of Peace at Oslo in 2009 and included these sentences. War in one form or another appeared with the first men. At the dawn of history, its morality was not questioned. It was simply a fact, like drought or disease. Surprisingly, it was an exact duplicate in human, in an old theory in our evolutionary history. In 1950, just after the Second World War, the hunting hypothesis was proposed by both cultural and physical anthropologists. Australopithecus Africanus, living about two million years ago, had already started to use hunting tools and even used weapons in a conflict between communities. The famous movie calls 2001, A Space Odyssey, well reflected such a hypothesis. When eight men were living in savannah, a strange rectangle landed from the space in front of them and gave an apron an inspiration. He picked up a large animal bone left nearby and started to use it for hunting. He became a hero. He was very successful. Later, his group encountered another group as a water puddle, and he started to attack another group with this tool and succeeded in chasing them away from the puddle. He was again a hero. This event was regarded as the, as the original sin, which led to the birth of war. The majority of people still believe that hunting inevitably brought weapons which enforce order in a competitive world. But it is not true. In our evolutionary history, for seven million years, bipedalism 
walking with two legs, appeared firstly, and features unique to humans appeared one by one. Lastly, agriculture appeared. Fossil evidences clearly show that hunting tools such as spears firstly appeared 0.5 million years ago. And evidence of weapons used in a war between communities appeared just after the emergence of agriculture. So war, even hunting, is not our nature. The reasons why and how human, non-human primates are living in groups do not include, ha include hunting, but avoiding to be hunted. The recent socio-ecological theory predicts that food distribution, <laughs> predation pressure, and social factors such as infanticide or male coercion promoted female association, which attracted male to attach to promote competitive regime and uh, habitat saturation, which finally leading to various social relationships. These factors should have taken an important role in the formation of human groups until recently. So, why and how did violence emerge in our evolutionary history? I think that strong empathy fostered by communal breeding, emergence of language, food production, and run tenure produced strong identity with the community, leading to enhanced violence very recently. In comparison with the great apes, humans have strange life history feature. Life history means scheduling of growth and reproduction. Human babies win very early. Humans have an adolescent period in which young people do have reproductive abilities, but do not participate in reproduction. Humans have long lifespan after menopause. Early weaning is strongly concerned with high fecundity. The great apes have never left the tropical rainforest where they can get plenty of food and security. When our human ancestors left the tropical rainforest, they faced lack of food and high predation pressure. In order to supplement the increased mortality, human ancestors should have found a new reproductive strategy. Early weaning stopped suckling to resume ovulation of mothers and reduced intervals interval, leading high fecundity. When brain size started to increase, somatic growth speeded down to provide much energy to brain growth. Completion of brain size permitted energy expenditure to somatic growth, which occurs as an adolescent spot at around 12 to 16 years old. Bipedal walks brought difficult delivery, so human ancestors acquired menopause and extended the following lifespan. These changes in life history features promoted to form families and communities and resulted in enhanced empathy and sympathy. 
Another feature to increase empathy is food sharing. It is well known food sharing observed among chimpanzee populations. When they eat meat, it is hypothesized that food sharing was derived from mother's provisioning of offspring, and it has spread among adults with reciprocal altruism. Recently, we found that gorillas also shared a large fruits among the group members, including adults in Mukaraba National Park, Gabon. Look at this. This is a group of gorillas who are crossing savanna into the, the another forest. They are forming a cohesive group. Now, a young male is heading to enter the forest. Probably to watch as a security. And the mothers with dependent offspring, dependent infants, on the back, associating together to wait for their leading silverback male. Silverback male is walking with juveniles, but he stopped for a while to look back at somebody else. Yes, please find a handicapped infant <coughs> is following the symbolic male at last. Mm. He lost his arm several days ago when the group encountered his other group as an accident. Surprisingly, mm -hmm. not only the symbolic male, but also mothers with infants, juveniles, and even the young male mm. who entered first came back at the edge of the forest and watched the infant to care of his security. Look at the left side. Young male is there. A community structure of humans constitutes of several families is supported by reciprocal and prosocial behavior through communal breeding and food sharing. And it is also maintained by strong empathy and sympathy, which leads to strong identity with the community. Now we can think about the evolutionary pathway to violence. Strong empathy and identity with the community enable human ancestors to expand their habitat into the risky environments. The emergence of language and production of foods led to these emotional abilities to being used for the protection of the communities and lands. Investment and stock of production promoted coalition within a community and increased conflicts between communities, which led to violent interactions. My conclusion is that Violence is not our nature, but a byproduct of enhanced empathy merged with humans' modern lifestyle. That's it. Thank you very much.